Well, good evening. My name is, uh, my name is Evan Gregory, and this is Bible Answers. Tonight we're going to be looking at Third John, and uh, so again, if you have your Bibles, please uh, feel free to follow along. I'm a member of the North Columbus Church of Christ. Uh, we're located in Columbus, Mississippi, and our website is North Columbus Christians uh, dot com, or you can find us on Facebook, and or you can find our YouTube channel as as well. And so uh, we meet on Sundays at 9, 10, 11 a.m., Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Uh, so we definitely love for anyone to, uh, to visit. Uh, we certainly don't shy away from any type of biblical discussion. We uh, uh, Even if those discussions are, you know, uh, that don't agree with what we believe or what we say, we certainly um, like to study those things from the Bible. And... Um, so, as also, uh, with you, if you're watching this, uh, you can leave a question or a comment. And again, even if that, if you're uh, not following along, if you don't disagree with what I'm saying, and uh, I'll respond to that, uh, you know, when I see those things. And so, uh, certainly like to have a discussion with you, uh, you know, even if you're watching this on YouTube or later on on Facebook. And so, the last few weeks we've been looking at First John. We looked at Second John last week, and today we're going to be looking at Third John. It's a very short uh, book. Uh, it only has 14 verses, and so uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, talking about this, but notice that John here in verse 1, that he references himself as the elder, again, uh, similar to what we see in Second John. And notice in verse 1 as well who he's writing this to. In Second John, he's writing to the elect lady, uh, some lady and her children, and here in Third John, John is writing to the beloved Gaius. I would guess that's how you would how you would say that. So some individual don't know who that person is, what they may be. But notice in verse one, it says, it "said to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth." And so we see there that uh, you know this he's this love of the individual and. Um, I'm not quite sure if he's saying that he truly loves this individual or uh, this truth, the, the truth of the gospel that they share is this bond of love that they share. But it says in verse 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And so in verse 2, he's, he's, he's praying that you can prosper in all things, be in health, uh, just as your soul prospers. And so he's saying that the soul prospers, so they're following the truth, they walk in the truth. Uh, we see in verse, uh, verse 3 of him walking in the truth. And so this is what's most important. His soul is prosperous, his soul is healthy. And so he's wishing just as he is walking in truth, he also hopes that he's physically uh, healthy as well. And in verse 4, he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my beloved, that my children walk in truth. And so uh, he calls him his children. I believe probably what John is referencing here is as he may have been directly involved with uh, this individual's conversion. And therefore, he's, uh, I guess you'd say that he's just child in that aspect because uh, through him he was able to uh, hear and believe the gospel. And he says he has no greater joy than to hear that, that his children walk in, walk in truth. So he is and so you kind of see John's perspective and we see that uh, kind of idea in First John and Second John that uh, he's, he's not so concerned that they're physically healthy or, or they're, they're prosperous and uh, in this world, his greatest joy comes through uh, those that believe that they're continuing to walk in truth. And that ought to say something for us and what our priorities ought to be. Or, you know, are our priorities focused on the things of this world or of the things of a spiritual nature? As John uh, is obviously showing here in this letter. In verse 5, he says, Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. 
And so in verse 5, he says, you know, whatever you do for brethren or for strangers of these, that uh, you know, fellow believers or even for strangers, you do those things faithfully, that you take care of their, uh, of their needs. And we see here that it says they, uh, the ones that you, uh, that you help, it says they bear witness of your love before the church, and so they're you know they're they're expressing uh, what you are doing for them, and he continues to John encourages to, con- to continues to encourage them to uh, you know continue to help those. He says send them forward on the journey in a manner worthy of God. You do well, and so he may be or well I don't know if it's a he or a she, but this individual. Uh, they're probably taking these people into their house or, you know, or, you know, housing them for some period of time and then sending them forward on their uh, journey. And so they're taking these individuals in and these are things which they ought to be doing. He says they're, he, that the, they do well. Uh, and, um, you know, when they're, when they're or engaging in this, and it says, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. And so, I don't know exactly all what's going on here for uh, the brethren here. Uh, you know, and, and I, in, in a sense, the Gentiles as, or the strangers that he took in as well, uh, they're going to be encouraged. They're going to, they're going to be talking about uh, him or, or this person who is taking these people in. And... The brethren are, are going to express their gratitude, and they're, and they're going to be, you know, uh, and, and be encouraged in that. And probably, seemingly, they're going to go on and do those, you know, help other individuals or specifically evangelizing those who are, uh, to those who are lost. And so this may have been some sense in which uh, those people that are going on those, I, I guess you would say, missionary journeys, uh, he may have been. They may have been housing uh, these individuals while they while they continue on their journey. Don't really know exactly. Uh, can't really clearly see what's actually uh, going on here. But he says that they went forth for his name's sake. They're not taking uh, uh, nothing from the Gentiles. They're not taking anything from others. And in verse eight says, "We ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth." And so us helping these individuals. Uh, that are going forth for his name's sake, he says, because of that, we become fellow workers for the truth. And so those that are, you know, helping those that are Christians, uh, we're, we're helping them along their journey. But even if those that we're taking in or helping are strangers, uh, they see the things that, that we have done. And that in and of itself, uh, you know, shows who we are and, and it gives us an opportunity uh, to, you know, show uh, the truth to them to to so so that they could uh, possibly be saved or you know at least have uh, these strangers have a good perception of what Christians uh, act like because the way uh, they have treated them uh, while when they took them in. In verse nine, we see where the tone of this letter changes. And it seems as though the church in which the Gaius is a member of is having some issues. He says, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. So this individual by the name of Diotrephes, we don't know a lot about this individual. The only thing that we really know is what John says about this person. And he says he loves to have the preeminence among them and does not receive us. So Diotrephes is this individual who basically is, is his way or the highway. Uh, he's the head honcho, so to speak, or wants to be the head honcho uh, within this congregation. And notice what he says. He says he does not receive us. And so I believe the us here is referencing to the apostles or uh, at the very least other Christians. And he says, so he has a preeminence. Uh, you know, this is, you know, he's ruling uh, this congregation in a sense. And he doesn't receive those who are uh, of the truth. And it says that uh, 
he is prating against us with malicious words. So he's he's speaking out against them. He's very malicious about these uh, Christians and the apostles as well. But notice what John says. He says, if I come, I'm going to call to mind his deeds, which he does. He's not going to overlook these things. He's not going to try to just kind of uh, forget about them. He's going to call these things out. He's going to call to mind his deeds, which he does. And so he's going to lay these things out for everyone to see. It's not going to be something that, that is going to be done in a uh, in a corner or in a very uh, obscure way. Uh, he's going to do those things. He's going to call to mind his deeds, which he does. And he says, and not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, uh, putting them out of the church. And so uh, not only... Uh, is he praying against us with malicious words? He says he uh, he he uh, he forbids those who wish to receive the brethren, and he puts them out of the church. And so, for whatever reason it may be, uh, if it, and it, at least in my mind, there's there's something going on here which he wants to he wants to hold the preeminence. But also, if there's brethren there that or brethren that come in that possibly may oppose him. Uh, he puts them out of the church. If they're not seemingly as if they don't agree or go along with what Diotrephes is doing, uh, they're going. He's going to speak evil against them, or he's going to put them out of the church. And and so in verse eleven, I believe this is really in, going along with this same idea. Of what's going on with uh, Diotrephes? He says, "Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is God? What is good? He who." Uh, does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. And so, I believe what John is saying is this: this this is evil. This guy is not of God. He's he's not receiving us. He's not receiving the apostles. He's not receiving the brethren, and he's so he's not receiving those that are of the truth. And so, this person is not of God. He's doing these evil things, and so it shouldn't be. Uh, you know, you know, understand who this person is, and you know, not don't just uh, or don't try to don't believe that this person is of God or he's doing these things which are good. This is the reality of the situation uh, that this person has not seen God or he's not of God, as John says in verse eleven. In verse twelve, he says Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. Again, we have another individual, so Demetrius, uh, in this in this verse. Again, we don't know much about uh, this individual, and so really don't know if this is some individual that is coming to Gaius, or this is maybe Demetrius is somebody uh, that Diotrephes has spoken uh, against. I don't know, but he says that John, Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth. So he's following the truth, and those that are around him, they speak good of him. And he says, we also bear witness, and you know that our testimony is true. So he's saying that the apostles here, uh, they're saying that he holds to the truth, uh, that this person is a good individual. And in verses 13 and 14, he ends this letter in a similar way that we see in 2 John. Uh, that He says, I wish had many things to write to you, but I do not wish to write to you with pen and ink, but I hope to see you shortly, and we shall speak uh, face to face. Be, peace to you, or friends greet you, uh, greet the friends by name. And so he says, I want to see you, then I'm, I want to uh, uh, see you uh, and speak to you. And I hope, and he wishes peace on them and their friends, and so a really uh, interesting uh, book. And, and John here again, he's he's talking about uh, uh, things that uh, he has already spoken of in First John, Second John, the necessity of of loving the brethren, loving the stranger. Of course, that in the context of helping those that have uh, these needs. Uh, that he is that Gaius is willing to fulfill those needs, and we also see these individuals that are in error. So for this uh, this book is Diotrephes, and that John is going to speak out against this. He's going to, he's not going to hold back. Seemingly, 
it seems as though that's what he's trying to say in verse 10, that he's going to call to mind those deeds which he does. And he's going, he's going to take care of and, and lay all those things out in the open and really showing those that may be kind of on the fence that this person is not of God, that we shouldn't let this individual hold uh, to preeminence uh, in that church. And so I uh, hope this has been useful for you. Again, it's not, not been a very long uh, video, uh, but uh, we're going to continue all next Thursday. Hope that you will uh, continue to uh, watch. And again, if you have any questions, comments on this, uh, leave those. I'll be glad to answer those. And uh, again, I hope to see you uh, next Thursday around 7 p.m. Uh, for more Bible Answers. Thanks.